Hey, this is Dean Takahashi from VentureBeat. I'm here with uh, Jim Thornton, who's a uh, researcher at Xerox Park. It's the uh, 40th anniversary of Park uh, here, and the place where they invented the computer mouse. And um, Jim, you have a, a project here called uh, Content-Centric Networking. Tell us what that is. That's right. Uh -huh. The Content-Centric Networking uh, changes the way that we get content over a network from a model like uh, the telephone of making connections to a particular server, as happens in the net today, uh -huh. to a model where we take uh, the names of content. The web already gave us content by name with URLs. But we allow the network to actually do the retrieval of content by those names at a low level. Uh -huh. So packet by packet, every uh, packet of content has a name. Uh -huh. And the consumers request the content by name from the network. And they don't have to care about where they get it from. They don't have to make a connection to a particular server, uh -huh. which allows you to trade storage for bandwidth everywhere in the network uh -huh. and alleviate uh, bottlenecks and contention uh -huh. when there's a lot of popular content, for example. Uh -huh. What we have here is a standard Firefox uh -huh. that's playing a video, uh -huh. and the Firefox is connected to a proxy, which happens to be local. Uh -huh. That proxy is taking those actual content requests and using the CCN protocol uh -huh. uh, to actually retrieve the content. Uh -huh. And so you can think of this as a sort of scenario where inside the network of an enterprise or a carrier, you might have CCN deployed, mm -hmm. and yet you don't have to change everything around it. So mm -hmm. in this case, the content can be obtained ultimately from a standard web server using yeah. HTTP today. So it's HTTP on the retrieval, on the server retrieval end, it's also HTTP to the browser, which is unmodified. So to translate, translate that a little bit for us, then uh, I guess uh, the original internet was designed so you go from point to point and you had to get something, you would go to that point all the way across the internet and bring it back. Uh, here it looks like you're just asking for something and wherever that thing is on the internet, it'll go to the place that's closest to you and then you get, get it there and bring it down. So like a video could be um, not on the clear other side of the internet, but maybe really close to you. That's right. Okay. So when you make your request of the network, mm -hmm. that request can be satisfied locally if there's already a copy mm -hmm. of the content locally. Uh -huh. And if not, then that request gets forwarded on uh -huh. in the direction of possible copies of the content. Uh -huh. That forwarding is very much like the way IP works uh -huh. in the existing uh, internet uh -huh. underneath. Uh -huh. But it does allow the earliest, the closest copy found as that request is forwarded uh -huh. can be used to reply to the request. Uh -huh. And then as that uh, reply is returned to the consumer, uh -huh. that content, a copy of that can be kept in storage at each of those nodes, uh -huh. which allows a subsequent request to get that content even more quickly. So you can get uh, what you want faster, like a video That's or right. a game, you can just get it faster. You can get what you want faster and you can get it saving uh, bandwidth congestion in the core of the network when a lot of people are wanting something very popular today and that means a lot of parallel connections retrieving the same things uh -huh. over links in the core of the network. Uh -huh. that can all be and these, these content delivery networks like Akamai, they, they operate now by setting up these different caches of, of things around the internet and they, uh, they serve the things fast that way, but um, uh, how is this better or how is this different? So CCN allows that kind of uh, use of storage to deliver content to be done automatically and pervasively throughout the network. Mm -hmm. That every piece of content without any pre-planning mm -hmm. can uh, be eligible to be shared mm -hmm. because the whole mode of delivery is that uh, that content goes into memories on the nodes mm -hmm. as it is forwarded. Mm -hmm. That's actually what happens today in IP routers from mm -hmm. the internet. Yeah. Is that content goes into a memory as it's transiting from one hop to another. Mm -hmm. But today, you can't reuse that content very effectively mm -hmm. because it's not identified by the content that it is. Mm -hmm. It's identified by a particular conversation between mm -hmm. a client and a server or someone. Mm -hmm. So if you have the content identified, then you can reuse it out of those memories mm -hmm. all along the way. So it's research now, what's it going to take to make this real and uh, to get it in place, I guess? Mm -hmm. 
so that of course is a, is a process mm -hmm. and uh, we have I think made a good start with some prototype software that is sort of aimed at the research community that is available in open source mm -hmm. uh, GPL software mm -hmm. um, we're also Park also uh, works with commercial clients mm -hmm. uh, leading edge companies that are interested in mm -hmm. uh, experimenting with for example proof of concept studies and trial deployments mm -hmm. and so we're interested in doing those kinds of things mm -hmm. that give us experiments from which we learn more to refine the architecture. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the process that we're in mm -hmm. uh, at this point is with uh, the research, our colleagues in the research community, some of whom we're working with on government funded projects, mm -hmm. uh, studying these kind of uh, arch network architecture ideas, and also being able to uh, experiment with uh, commercial clients and interesting business problems, mm -hmm. we develop the understanding to refine the protocols. Mm -hmm. So uh, we could all get our videos of Burning Man faster. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. Great. Thank you. And securely.